Uh, today I have a, a couple of moths. These are Saturnid moths from the United States, Eastern United States, uh, Calisamia promethea. Uh, these are both males. I, I got some cocoons last fall. Here are the cocoons. They're very distinctive looking. They were like hang from a a branch like this. And these are captive raised. Uh, people raise these by the thousands and for people who like to breed them. I was hoping to get a pair and maybe mate them and uh, get some eggs and raise a batch of them. Uh, and the way you can sex them, one of the ways you can sex them is to weigh the cocoons. The females are larger than the males. And so I used a little gram scale and I weighed the cocoons and um, one of them was considerably heavier than the other, so I uh, had good reason to believe that one was a uh, female. But it turned out they were both males, so since I didn't have a pair, I just um, I'm going to use them for uh, specimens for my collection. Um, these are uh, fairly common, uh, very easy to raise. Uh, the females look quite a bit different than the males. I'll, I'll show you later. Uh, the difference uh, that's called sexual dimorphism. So I'm just going to pin these up. I don't need to relax them. They haven't been dried and they should be very very easy to pin. Um, I'm going to pull the front legs out a little bit so we maybe can see those when the specimen's pinned. These are pretty small for Saturnid moths uh, and the color is distinctive. Uh, this very dark, almost black color is unusual. The only other moth in North America, Saturnid moth, that has this kind of dark coloring is the uh, um, Eupicardia. So I'm going to use a medium sized pin here and get it right through the middle of the thorax. And I want to make sure that it's straight. You always want to make sure that the pin is straight. You can see in the bottom when you've hit the right spot because it comes through right between the legs. So you got it right through the middle. And you want to make sure that it's uh, perpendicular this way and straight through the middle. Uh, there's another way to tell what the genders are when they're still in the cocoon. You can look at the pupa. If you cut open the cocoon and remove the pupa, the pupas are exarchate, so the features of the adult moth are visible on the pupa. And the males have considerably larger antennae than the females do. The, the females have very small antennae and the males have these, you know, pretty large ones. And this is to facilitate the males being able to find the females through the pheromones. The females release a pheromone that the males can smell with their antenna. Um, if you lived in the habitat where these were, uh, you could put a female out in a cage at night and the males would be attracted to her. And this is in fact what a lot of people do when they, when they breed them. Uh, the males can come from like a mile away to find that female. Okay, so I have the pin through straight. Now I'm going to place it in the center of the pinning board. You want to make sure and get everything centered and make sure the pin is straight up and down and that it's straight this way too so that it's not tilted one way or the other. That looks pretty good. Push the pin down in. there. Now I use a fairly thick pin to brace the abdomen so that when I pull on the wings it doesn't spin around. Oh, that's not quite straight. There we go. Okay. I've got a couple of pieces of glassine that I've cut to the right size and I'm going to use one to hold down the right side kind of keep that wing out of the way while I work on the left side. Make sure the body's 
at the right level. There it is. And I take a pin and use the tip to grasp the um, edge of the wing and pull the forewing up so that the lower edge of the forewing here is perpendicular to the body. I'm going to lift this hind wing up a little too there. And then uh, I usually have the glassine lined right up with the top edge of the wing. And I use some glass head pins to pin the glassine to hold the wing down. And that should do. And then uh, I lift up the lower part of the glassine and grasp the lower wing by a thick vein with the pin and bring it up. And I'm watching right where the wings meet to find a, a spot that I can remember where the patterns line up. Okay, I've got a little edge there. I'll line up. And I'll use more glass pins to hold that down. Now that side's done. I'll flip it over and do the other side. We get these cocoons in the fall and um, then keep them in the refrigerator all winter long. And I wait until the leaves are out on the trees in the spring before I get them out. And usually you get them out and they'll hatch pretty quickly. Uh, these didn't. It took a while to get them to hatch. Now I line up the top of this glassine sheet with this glassine sheet so that the wings are in the same position. They're symmetrical. And I'm going to hold the glassine in place by putting a pin at the bottom here to hold that sheet. And then I'm going to take a pin, grab the forewing, and pull it right up so that the edge lines up with the top of the glassine. And that should make both of the wings line up. Pin to hold it. Okay. And then again, lift up the glassine and grab the edge of the lower wing. Pull it up and line it up with the same mark as I did on the other side. Should be right there. Okay, now I'll give it a visual inspection to make sure it looks like it's symmetrical. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, this pin I used to brace the abdomen, I'm going to remove that. and I'm going to move the abdomen over slightly so it's in the center. That looks good. And I'm going to take a couple of pins and cross them like this and lift the abdomen because it's soft and when it when it dries I don't want it sagging. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to take a couple of pins and just brace the antennae so that they're in a natural angle. There. And finally, I'm going to try and grab the front legs and lift them up a little bit. I like to have the front legs up where we can see them. Actually, this pin holding the antenna is in the way. There. Get that leg up. Some of the Saturnid moths have kind of nice patterns on their legs, so it's kind of nice to see them with the legs out. <clears throat> this one's not particularly interesting, but still. Get this leg up here. Oh, this pin's in the way too. I'll move it. There we go. And uh, I'll check the antennas again. 
get them kind of symmetrical looking. There. Looks pretty good. And this is the other male. It's a little bit larger. Now, when the first one emerged, it was a male, of course, and I put it in the refrigerator to keep it alive. They don't feed as adults, so they only live no, less than a week um, just on the stored energy in the body. Uh, and so I was hoping that the other would emerge and it would be a female and I could mate them. But, you know, the male might not survive long enough, so by putting it in the refrigerator, I could, keep, I could extend its life. It could live for a couple of weeks that way. And then if the female had, in fact, emerged, or had it emerged as a female, then I could have taken this male out of the refrigerator, warmed him up, and I could have possibly gotten a successful mating and raised some caterpillars. But it turned out to be a male after all. So the second one, I'll do the same thing, get it right in the center of the spreading board and make sure the pin is nice and straight. There. Yep. And I've got my glassine sheets. Hold down the right wing. Well, actually, brace, brace the abdomen first. There we go. And then uh, hold down the right wing. And then a glassine sheet on the left. And then uh, oh, the pin came loose. Grasp the wing edge with a pin and raise it up till it's perpendicular. Set the glassine at the top edge of the wing. And pin it in place. kind of pull this glassine taut over the wing with my finger. It won't damage the wing to touch the glassine. If it's covering the wing, you can pull on that glassine. It's not going to scrape the wing. Okay, now we bring the hind wing up. And pin that in place. I like to put a pin right at the little triangle where the wings meet. It really helps hold them down. And one on the bottom. That side's done. Flip it over. And I line up the top of the glassine with the glassine on this side, which will set the wings at the right height. Hold the glassine in place with a pin at the bottom. Grab the forewing with the pin and bring it up to the top of the glassine sheet. And then pin that in place. Stretch the glassine over the wing. And grab the lower wing vein and pull it up. Oh, the wing is the lower wing has gotten above the upper wing. So what I'm going to do is a little trick. Take a pin and I reach under here and lift up the forewing and then push, use the, the head of the pin and push the lower wing back underneath where it belongs. There we go. And then grab it with the pin and pull it up there. Now it's underneath the forewing. And I can pull it up to where it's supposed to be. Right there. And attach the glassine with pins. Okay. And again, we'll check for symmetry. Yeah, that looks really good. 
and then we'll take a couple of pins and raise the abdomen. With a little brace. Oh, come on. There we go. All of this gets much, much easier with practice. I know, when you do this for the first few times, and you can feel like a complete clutch. <coughs> Trust me, we all did. But after you've shinned up a bunch of them, it gets to be very, very easy. And I'm going to try and pull those legs up so I can see them. There's that one. And there's that one. And I'll get a couple of pins and spread the antennae out so they look nice. That one. And this one. One last check. That looks really good. Okay, we're done. Now we just let these dry. Um, if they're fresh like this, it often takes quite a bit longer for them to dry than if they were originally dried and rehydrated. Uh, it just depends on the humidity, temperature. Um, it might take quite a few days, a few days probably. So uh, when these are dry, I will come back and uh, we'll pull them down and, and see how they look. I'm going to make some labels here while I'm at it. Always put labels on the specimens. Um, we don't, these were raised in captivity, so we don't really have a location. So I'm just going to say USA, because that's what we know. And the name, uh, Calosamia Promethea. And it's a male, so we'll put the male symbol on there. And then um, uh, Exova means it hatched out of an egg, so they were raised in captivity. Um, 2018. I think it's best to make the labels right away. Keep them with the specimen. There's always a chance you could forget if you were doing a bunch of specimens which label goes with which specimen. I have done it. <laughs> So it's always best to do it, keep the data with the specimens throughout the whole process so that there's no confusion. There we go. Now it's been about a week since I pinned these up and the specimens are dry. One of the ways you can tell is you take a pin and touch the abdomen and if the abdomen is stiff and dry then the specimen's dry. Yeah, it looks really good. Yep. Wings look symmetrical. We'll attach the label. Yeah. We'll do the other one. Yeah, there's a scratch here on the wing. I, this is the larger one. I was hoping to keep this one as my teaching specimen, but uh, that's noticeable damage. It's still a good specimen for someone, but um, I will use this one in my teaching collection because the wings are less damaged. Uh, this is my one of my Saturnia family moth teaching boxes. Um, these are Hyalophora over here, Scropia, Urealis. Um, this is the Arizona one, Gloveri, um, uh, Columbia 
from the Northeast. This is a European moth. These are the largest moths, Atlas and Hercules. Uh, Epiphora, this is an African one. And uh, Rothschildia, uh, Central and South American. Um, Samia Cynthia. And this is Calisamia. This is the female of this one. You can see they look quite a lot different. And then these two, this is a pair, male and female, of Eupocardia from Arizona. It's the only other really dark one. Now, since the Calisamia are sexually dimorphic, and since I have a pair of these, I think I'm going to pull the male Eupocardia, and I'm going to replace it with the male of the uh, Calisamia. So I can represent that other dark colored species. Yeah, let me get that straight. He's a little bit small, but a nice match to this female and a good addition to the uh, to the teaching collection.